India made space history earlier this week when it became the first country to land a spacecraft on the moon's South Pole. And today, its prime minister made an announcement. Narendra Modi says the area where the lander touched down will be named Shiv Shukti. Now, that's a reference to the power of the Hindu god Shiva. He's also said August 23rd is going to be celebrated as National Space Day in India. Yesterday, the country's space agency released a video of the Chandrayaan-3 rover exploring the lunar surface. The mission has been met with excitement across the global scientific community. So let's meet a member of that community and talk about this amazing achievement. Let's bring in Michael Unger. He is the program coordinator of the H.R. McMillan Space Center, and we've reached him in Vancouver. Michael, good to see you. Nice to talk to you again, Natasha. Michael, let's talk about the significance. There are so many firsts here, a first for India, a first on the South Pole of the moon, uh, a first for the world. Why does this all matter? Yeah. Well, it matters because it's not only individual countries going back to the moon. And we talked about this a few years ago when India made its attempt with Chandrayaan 2 to land on the moon. And this signifies that it's not just NASA. It's not just the European Space Agency. And it's not even China. As we've seen, all of these countries have been targeting the moon to set up a uh, base, to extract the resources there, to extend humanity's reach out into space. And this really shows that it is not just going to be a few countries, but it's going to be the whole world working together on this. And to show that India is capable of this is a huge step. You and I spoke back in 2019 when India had a failed attempt at a similar sort of yeah. mission. And for you, that really sparked an interest in India's space program. Talk to us about that. Absolutely, because, you know, there have been many countries that have talked uh, for a long time about going back to the moon. It, we have not seen any humans walking on the moon since 1972. But sometimes we get so worked up uh, about the, the, the big picture, uh, about what we're actually trying to do, and also the cost of it, right? And I think that that's a very real thing to think about, is that there is a monetary cost, but there is also a resource cost as well to get back to the moon. So to actually see it actually happen, and to actually see other countries actually step up, it, the reality of seeing humans back on the moon is very real. And we have seen with the Artemis mission, uh, they, NASA, along with all of the countries that have signed on to the Artemis Accord, including Canada, uh, have made it a goal to set foot back on the moon, uh, which is very exciting. And it's very exciting to see that India is going to be very much part of that plan. Why is the South Pole of the moon significant? Yeah, so it was really interesting. A few years ago, uh, there was a mission called L-Cross, and they smashed a lander into the South Pole. And what they found is that there are these craters that are permanently shadowed. So they don't see any sunlight at all. They end up being some of the coldest places in the solar system. And surprisingly, we found that there was ice inside of those craters, which is extremely important if we want to utilize some of those resources. If humans are gonna go back to the moon and live in and around the moon uh, in the future, they're gonna to need to figure out the water problem. Water is the key to life. It'll be able to sustain humans, uh, and eventually we'll be able to figure out how to use those resources, not only to sustain the humans, but to also develop fuel for rockets to go even further, perhaps to Mars. All these other places that we're hoping to get to, there's a lot of talk about extracting resources from asteroids. Rare Earth materials here on this Earth are being used up. All of those possibilities start with going back to the moon. And this uh, going to the South Pole, it seems like, is going to be the target. So there's a huge jump between where we are right now and all of those possibilities that you reference. Mm -hmm. Now that India yeah. is on the South Pole of the moon, what are they doing? What's the actual work that's being done there? Yeah, so one of the big challenges is navigating the South Pole. So when we look up at the moon in the nighttime sky, we see those flat regions come up, contrasting sort of like the white hilly regions. And when we see the Apollo astronauts, those videos, you see generally a lot of flatter regions that they were navigating, driving around in those moon buggies. But in the South Pole, it is very cratered like really, really deep craters with high hills. So navigating in and around that landscape is going to be tricky. And so the lander on Chandrayaan th uh, 3 is going to help us understand what that landscape is really like. 
so that's the first step because we have never been there before. So we need to understand what's going on there and to learn a little bit more about the landscape of the South Pole. You know, you referenced the Apollo missions in 1969, and at least from the mo movie versions I've seen, people gathered around their TVs, and it was a big global event to see man reach the moon. And of, of yeah. course it should be. But it didn't seem that much of a global event when India mm -hmm. reached the South Pole. And I just wonder what your thought is. Have we become jaded about all this, or is it because it's not a a Western or European country that we don't care as much? What, what's going on there for you? Well, I think what, what happens is that there's a lot competing for our, our news cycle, right? And you, right. You, you probably know this more than anyone else, is that there is a lot out there that pulls our attention. And there's a lot going on in the world that is not good news. So this is good news, but then there's always the pessimistic side of why we're really doing this. I think we're really waiting for that moment. And I think the moment is going to come with the Artemis mission when we finally see that first woman set foot on the moon and look back on our home planet and hear the stories of those humans looking back on our home planet. That's going to be that perspective shift that I think we all need, that when we go out into space, we go out into space as Earthlings. And when you look back on the Earth, you don't see the borders of our countries and all of the conflict and all of the, the troubles that we have right now, we have to figure out together. And so uh, India, I know getting to the moon is a great achievement, um, but that's going to stack on top of other countries going to go back. Canada is going to go back with its own rover. And finally, when we start to see humans on the moon together, it will be a global achievement. So um, I wouldn't discount that this is a big deal and a lot of people are talking about it, but it may be a few years yet before we finally get that global event. Can I just ask you one final question, uh, Michael, which is yeah. if you're from Earth, you're an Earthling. And if you're on Mars, you're a Martian. What is it if you're a resident right. of the moon? Well, I think maybe you're a lunatic. <laughs> okay, Barum Tis, Michael Unger joining us from Vancouver. Thank you so much.